Hi, this video is about the Caribou Mathematics Contest. I'm going to show the solution for the May 2016 Grade 7 8 Contest Question 22, which also came up in the Grade 9 10 and 11 12 contests. So the question is <coughs> Mark stands on the street and watches Jim, who is passing by, pedaling on his bicycle. When looking at Jim's right foot, the path that it moves on most closely resembles. Okay, this is a sketch of the bicycle, where this is the front wheel, this or the front tire, this is the back tire, and these are the front and back gear wheels, where the pedals are mounted on the front gear wheel. All right. Now, the complicated motion of Jim's right foot in relation to the street can actually be split up into two simpler motions, and the first one being the circular motion of Jim's right foot on the pedal in relation to the bike frame, and the second one being the uniform straight line motion of the bike frame in relation to the street. Okay. Now, this arrow... represents the vector for the velocity of the bike frame in relation to the street and these two arrows represent the vectors for the velocities of the bike pedals in relation to the bike frame. Now I drew this arrow much longer than these two arrows because the absolute velocity, absolute value for the velocity of the bike frame in relation to the street is much higher than the absolute value for the velocities of the bike pedals in relation to the bike frame. Now, this is the case for two reasons. The first reason is that on a normal bicycle, the front gear wheel is larger than the back gear wheel. And therefore, the back gear wheel must rotate faster than the front gear wheel. Now, since the pedals are mounted on the front gear wheel, and they, move at, they ro rotate at the same speed, and also since the back gear wheel is mounted on the back tire, and they also rotate at the same speed, the back tire then rotates faster than the bike pedals do. That was the first reason. Now the second reason is that the radius of the back tire is longer than or larger than the length of the bike pedal or the pedal bar for the bike. So for those two reasons, the surface of the tire the back tire it actually moves at a faster speed or moves faster than in relation to the bike frame than the bike pedals do in relation to the bike frame. All right. Now actually, the velocity for the surface of the back tire is the same is the same as the velocity for the bike frame in relation to the street. This is the case because if the back tire were to make one full rotation, well then the bike itself would be traveling the circumference of this back tire in the same amount of time. So therefore those two vectors are the same and we have just proved that why this vector, the velocity of the bike frame in relation to the street must be greater than the absolute values for the velocities of the bike pedals in relation to the bike frame. Okay, now let's look at the options. Okay, now option A. Well, we can see that when the bike pedal is at the top, it moves faster than when the bike pedal is at the bottom. Well, this makes sense because when the bike pedal is at the top, its vector is the same direction as the vector for the velocity of the bike frame in relation to the street. So, of course, that sum will be greater since you are just adding that they're both in the same direction, that sum will be greater than the sum of the two vectors when the pedal is at the bottom, since they are going in opposite directions. So it would be pretty much just finding the difference of those two. 
and that explains why this is so narrow. And now it also makes sense that it doesn't stop when the bike pedal is at the bottom because we know that the absolute value of this vector or this velocity is larger than the absolute value of this velocity of the bike pedal at the bottom. All right, so therefore option A is okay. Now let's look at option B. Well, what this shows is again the same for when the bike pedal is at the top, but when we look here, we can see that when the bike pedal is at the bottom, that would be like a stance though. It would be, that would mean that the vector of the bike pedal at the bottom would be equal to this vector, the bike frame in relation to the street. But we know that that's not the case because again, we know the bike frame moves faster in relation to the street than the pedal at the bottom in relation to the bike frame. So therefore option B can't be true. And now let's look at option C. Well actually option C shows that not just standing, but it shows that when the bike pedal is at the bottom, that it actually moves faster in the opposite direction than the bike in relation to the street. And again, we know that that's, that can't be true because we know that this vector, this velocity is larger than this vector here. Okay, and actually, if you look at option, so therefore C cannot be true. And if you look at option G, it is actually even more of an exaggeration of when the bike pedal is at the bottom that it moves fast in the opposite direction, but we know of course that that is not the case. So it can't be G either. Okay, now let's look at D and E. Well, what D and E both show, well, what D and E both show is that when the bike pedal is at the bottom, it moves much faster than when the bike pedal is at the top. Well, when we look here, we can see that when the bike pedal is at the top, it is going in the same direction as the bike frame in relation to the street. So of course that sum will be greater than the sum of these two vectors. So therefore, for that reason, both options D and E must be wrong. And now finally, let's look at option F. What we can see here is that when the bike pedal is at the top, it is like symmetric, its path is symmetric to when it is at the bottom. But again, when we look at the vectors, we can see that these, when it's at the top, the vectors are both positive, so both going in the same direction, whereas when it's at the bottom, you would be finding the difference since it is going in the opposite way. So therefore, they would not be symmetric and option F cannot be a possible option. So therefore, the only option that works is option A, which is this option here. Now, the key to solving this problem was realizing that you could split up the complicated motion of Jim's right foot in relation to the street into two simpler motions, and the first one of that being the circular motion of Jim's right foot in relation to the bike frame, and the second one being the uniform straight line motion of the bike frame in relation to the street. If you'd like to know more about this contest, please feel free to visit our website at caributest.com.